let me take you guys on a little journey for this week's forgotten game of the week. This week, we're talking about Gladius. Came out in 2003, uh, developed by LucasArts for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. Uh, did you guys, either of you, play that game in your day? No, it doesn't even ring a bell. Not at all. So, uh, what this game is about is you own a gladiator school. And it's got a bit of a Pokemon vibe to it in that you collect gladiators and have them in your school and you upgrade every piece of them. You upgrade their armor, you upgrade their, their you know, their sword and you upgrade their uh, abilities like their attack speed, their movement speed, things like that. And once these soldiers die, or these gladiators die, they're dead. They're gone. For them. Oh. So you tend to um, invest emotionally into them because you name them. Out, out of, they give you a list of really cool... Um, names that would fit the time period and you could name them and just work on them and it's really testicles cool. testicles <laughs> <laughs> what other we got any other gems <laughs> no just that one put you on the yeah. spot <laughs> <laughs> you got any more wise guy <laughs> no so like you uh you create uh you know these these gladiators from the ground up and you go to these other gladi gladiatorial gladia how how do how does gladiator that? schools gladiator schools you go to these other gladiator schools and you gladiate Oh, you gladiate all right. You gladiate <laughs> all hard. over them. And you fight. Do you gladiate other... inside of them too? You gladiate all over their chest piece. <laughs> <laughs> so taking a different course here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and so there's over there's over five hundred different encounters in the game. They all kind of work like open arena Pokemon battles, like in a in a Coliseum, where it's your five soldiers against their five soldiers. And they you can mix it up with all kinds of ranged attacks, close attacks. You can, can unlock minotaurs and things like that. Um, it's uh, kind of movement-based like uh, Advance Wars is, where your guy has four movement. He can move four blocks to try to flank the opponent and attack him. Um, for what was 2003, I was uh, like 15 or something, I think. And it was really unlike me to be into a game like that, but I was really into the, like, the Roman setting, you know what I mean? Um, and there was two stories for the game, two completely separate, uh, about 10 hour long stories where you could play the male Valens or the uh, female, his sister Ursula. And it told two very different stories. So it was really cool through, through these battles. Um, yeah, you, you could still find it on uh, emulators. I'm sure the game is dirt cheap on, online on Amazon. Uh, does this sound like a game that either of you would play? I, I love, love turn-based combat, so I'm 100% interested in this game. I'm going to look up an emulator for it as soon as we're done with this podcast. Yeah, we might have to do a Let's Play of this, figure this out. Oh, yeah. We could definitely do it on your computer. Yeah, we can figure um, that out. We should do that for sure. But, um, but yeah. I'm, and you're I'm, a history buff, too, right? I'm a history buff, and, more, and just like you, I really love ancient settings. So being in a yeah. Roman setting or a Greek setting or... A certain time era just triggers your imagination, just kind of makes you imagine yourself being in that era. So, yeah, I'm totally into that. So, right. we, we, we got to try this. A let's play, listen up, cross players. Let's play for Gladius coming out soon. Let us know. If, don't let us forget. Get us on Twitter at Crossplay Pod. Hold us accountable. Hold us accountable. <laughs> like, I need just in life, I need someone to hold me accountable. So, if you guys are life coaches, certified life coaches. <laughs> Tony Robbins, you out there? Please reach out to me. Please tell me how much I'm fucking up. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Peps, what about you? Would you play Gladius? Yeah, that type of gameplay, how it is. It runs, what you just basically explained was essentially um, Fire Emblem to me. Oh, yeah. Talk about Fire yeah. Emblem. That is one of the uh, franchises of my childhood that just went completely by me. Never played it. I know it's Marth and Roy. That's one of them. Yeah, there's multiple fucking Fire Flim, uh, Fire Flims. Fire yeah, Emblem fire games flim, out flim, there, flims. Um, ladies but, and folks. Uh, but no, flim that's flims. that's essentially what the early, yeah, the earlier ones were about. You know, you it wasn't like said in his medieval like fantasy land type shit. Uh, you could uh, you the cool thing about this, uh, you know, all the type of uh, warriors you talked about was essentially what Fire Emblem has too. So in Fire Emblem, do you build like a like a stable? It's not a well. You well you you go around as a party, like a caravan type of shit. I Not see. essentially a school, but yeah. But in the earlier ones, you you know, as you progress to the levels, you pick up new uh, warriors, soldiers, whatever, thieves, archers, uh, wyvern riders. So, uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, wyvern? Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. dragon, like a really yeah. small dragon. A really small dragon, uh, but you're a soldier on top of it with a lance. 
Nice. So Always down to ride a yeah. dragon. Jousting on dragon. Jousting on dragon, yeah. Nice. Well, back to Gladius. You know, it not only was you know the setting and everything really rad. It had awesome combat, and the music to boot was really just typical of the of the time period. And it was a really great game. So go ahead and check out Gladius if you're looking for a forgotten gem that you would like to check out. It's got the Nikki James seal of approval. Moving on down the list uh, to the topic of the show, gentlemen, should the price of games be increased to sixty dollars. Now, hear me out. Seventy. Okay, from sixty. <laughs> That's right. Not so. Not necessarily seventy is a hard price point. Just just anywhere really. Uh, should they come out? Because a lot of developers believe that games aren't worth sixty dollars anymore. So to kind of uh, combat that, they've introduced things like microtransaction economies for them to earn money on a game after it's come out. Uh. So is it time to raise the price of games? Because there was a time in the su- even back in the Super Nintendo, some games were eighty, ninety dollars in that time's money. <laughs> like so, imagine how expensive it would be now. There was no right. standard for game prices until the GameCube period came out, and all games were I think fifty, and then around the Xbox three hundred and sixty, they were raised to sixty dollars. But then there was no bump this generation; they still are sixty dollars, even though development costs overhead is higher than ever before for these development companies. Uh, so should is it time to increase the price of games, Peps, PepsiCo, Big no, Bad Peps? Not at all. What not for me, at least. I mean, I, I don't mind microtransactions. Uh, I just avoid them. If it, if it's pay to win that type of model, I wouldn't give a shit about that game. To be right. perfectly honest. So then we have where those two. You you say if it's pay to win, you're not down, but yeah. you're also down for microtransactions. And then in walks NBA 2K18. Where they start blurring that line. Um, recently, there's been a controversy involving the Sixth Axis.com, a pretty popular and well trusted PlayStation uh, review site, where one of their uh, reviewers reviewed NBA 2K18 as a three out of ten, uh, despite it being a pretty damn good game. They they cited uh, the egregious use of microtransactions. Um, what had what happened Thanks. after that was 2K got in touch with the reviewer, and the site uh, score disappeared from Metacritic, disappeared from their website. And then people noticed the Streisand effect took place and way more people than that would have seen it originally now have seen it like you guys and me. And uh, now the score reappeared um, and 2K is running away with their tail between their legs. Now, the reason why the score was so bad was because of the microtransaction economy in that game. Now, if you want to unlock micro like Michael Jordan's dunk, you got to play over 200 games. Where if you go back to NBA 2K14, you could do that in eight games. But now they're, they're forcing you to buy this VC, their virtual currency, if you want to really get anywhere with your character other than your basic buzz cut <laughs> and layup. You know what I mean? And a lot of people, not me, but a lot of people play these games to death. Like I play WWE or Rainbow Six. Like they, they will spend that money if it's available. So is it fair? Like or... You know what I mean, and so that's that's why they got that really bad score. So, so what do you think of that, uh, Peps? Like, wh- where was the line drawn for you personally? Purposely making you play to unlock a lot of shit behind a paywall—that's pretty garbage. That's a pretty shitty practice. Right. Um, but isn't it okay up to a degree, right? Like, like for to Rainbow some degree, Six yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, I guess that's where we where we got to draw. We got to figure out where that line is. You know what I mean? How much time? is necessary why do i have to play i forget the number something like 24 games to unlock uh, a nice haircut in nba 2k18 so it's is where's that line at for you is it just case by case basis or case, case, case by case yeah for me with a game like nba um nba 2k i'm uh, 200 games to me sounds like nothing that sounds like so fast. Yeah, I'd probably accomplish if I was into that game. You probably play maybe up to six to ten games a day if you're really into that game, maybe even more. So yeah. that would probably take you four months. Yeah. So and I don't know. Is that too long? I well, because th- those games last me all season long, uh, mm-hmm. not just during the NBA season, all year, all year long till the new one comes out. And um, when I was playing the uh, last year's, I remember getting past all of. All, getting through all the unlock things that I wanted to unlock um, for for my character to make them exactly what I wanted, 
I think I got to that point way too fast and it made me stop playing the game. And so, yeah. so if it takes longer to unlock the really, really cool stuff, if it puts a really high value on the stuff where you got to work at it to, to unlock it, then I think it's a good thing. So you're saying it's just a, a means of whether intentional or not, it's a means of extending the playability of the game. It may, yeah, I doubt that was their intentions. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, but, yeah. but it does, you know, for as me, a side effect. It, it, yeah, it has that side effect. Um, if it, if it's play, if it's truly play to win, though, where it's unlock abilities and unlock, unlock things like this with money, when you're playing online, it'll, it'll ruin the online, online gameplay for me. So, yeah. um, kind of like the UFC 2, not the, um, not just the quick match, but the mode where, where you have your team, the my team, right? That is play to win. That one is you pay and you can unlock the coolest shit and or the the most devastating kicks, the, the moves, most devastating yeah, punches, right? Um, and the best cards, you know, power up abilities. So that really ruined it for me because it was just I'm not gonna pay any money during a game. I I don't I don't think there's any in game transactions that I've done outside of DLC. I don't, I, I'm not a fan of the microtransaction market. And so, you know, for me, I don't know. I think this game is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a good thing, but it's, I got to try it to see. I'm kind of, of two minds on it because on one hand, I think it's really shitty of them to intentionally create a model where your $60 game has the economy of a fee to play game from Android, from the Android market. You know what I mean? And they're, intentionally do it doing it to to exploit money out of the whales you know the the they, the whales are the people that are going to spend two hundred dollars on vc you know right. they'll they'll alienate all of us to get to those people um mm-hmm. and that's i guess ethically shady but it's fucking it's business it's, dude it's capitalism <laughs> yeah it's not even really it's yeah it's just capitalism it's shady as far as capitalism is shady as a whole yeah it's just they're trying to make as much money as possible while, call me. while keeping most people happy i'm not <laughs> no it, it, but uh, you know like no it, no i i'm i'm effing with you effing, uh, i'm effing your a um but let me so so let me ask you this though so you're saying back in the day nintendo games super nintendo games some of them if you account for inflation or uh, if you're using today's dollar they would have been eighty dollars plus certain games. No, some games were eighty dollars plus in nineteen ninety one dollars. Um, there was no standard. Oh, like you would go to the store and, pay and nine. yeah, you would oh, pay. Shit. You paid. Um, I'll have to look it up, but I know there was many game popular games, Street Fighter, Mario games that were intentionally super highly priced because there was no real standard. The developer to release, you know, decided yeah. the price, which is kind of the way it should be, to be honest. There is no reason The Witcher 3 should be $60. That is a $100 game that I would pay $100 for. Rainbow Six, to me, is a solid $60 game. You know what I mean? But then you get games that are $60 like, uh, I don't know, let's think. uh, What was a bomb? Anything bomb this year really hard? (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember them. Yeah, but just take a game that bombs. That game should not have been $60. Like Battleborn. Battleborn. Right. That's a forty dollar game, labeled sixty dollars. Now developers sometimes will do that. Ratchet and Clank was only a thirty dollar game. Uh, no Man's Sky, no, that was sixty. No Man's Sky, I think. But but anyways, the point being is that yeah, back then developers would set their own prices for games. Some of them were incredibly expensive. Yeah. So what what were you? What I well, what I was gonna ask is how many games, how many games have you put that sort of money into with with all the DLC and. And with um, and even like in Rainbow Six, like you, you, could, you, you could spend money for for uh, the little experience. Points. Renown, yeah. Um, I mean, have you spent that kind of money on any game before? I mean, that seems like one of those things. Like uh, video games now are probably priced the same way they were back then. Um, like, well, Rainbow Six is to me a different case because I don't buy Renown in Rainbow with my money um, unless I've gotten like a gift card from somebody. Yeah, but. What I do buy is the season pass, but that's because I'm such a fan of Rainbow. I genuinely want to support them, and I want to support the developer. So I will purchase their DLC, the the season passes. Um, but there's that, and then there's you know NBA 2K18 situation, uh, where it's clearly just to um, hold you back if you don't pay up more money after you 
buy the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, where it's like if you if you don't have the persistence to unlock this, here's an easy way out. Yeah, and a lot of people are going to take that easy way because that's just how people are. You know, it's the way, yeah. we, way and we are. De- and depending how hard they make it. That's why I want the game to come out. I want to play it because I want to see how long it really is going to take for me to unlock uh, some of the cool shit in the game. Nice. I think one thing um, by increasing it to $70, um, I, don't, I, I think that's just an extra $10 they would be making per game. I don't think... May, it, Increasing that would make any difference on microtransactions. People who spend full price on a game who also like to spend money on microtransactions are still going to do that. Um, I think if they're smart, they would wait to increase the price till the next gen of consoles come out. Just right. like when PS2, I remember PS2 games were 50 bucks. Right, yep. And then here comes PS3. And they're 60 now. Now they're 60. But it, ki- it almost made sense. I was like, okay, the newer one, it's all this, Blu-ray and... Okay, I'll spend. <laughs> you know, Here, here's a cool side question: What is a game that you would that in the past few years is there a game that you would have spent a hundred dollars or more on based on the experience you've gotten after release, where you could sit back and say, now knowing what I've known and what I've experienced in this game, I would have paid a hundred dollars for this game. Is there any game that that strikes that chord for you, Zach? Oh yeah. Uh, Skyrim off the bat. Oh yeah, Skyrim for sure. I would have paid a hundred dollars for it. That's it was so so much hours of gameplay. Hell play. yeah, that's the easy. So immersive. That's an easy one. You don't know, but good one. Um, what about you, Peps? Anything off the top of your head? What? Uh, Overwatch. Even I know you love you yourself some Overwatch. <laughs> Easily, yeah, very much so. Um, but even then, Overwatch doesn't even have much DLC. Yeah, they yeah. they give pretty good post release support, yeah. right? How often? Yeah. When was the last time they came out? Oh, it was Doomfist came out in like Doomfist August, out, right? Yeah, or, no, some, or July? Sometime in July, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was in July. It was right when we started podcasting. Um, but no, yeah, they got shit coming out like every month. That's all free, whether it be a new character or, or a new map. I know recently, actually, they just got a new map, uh, Junker Town, I believe. What is it, Junker Town? Junker Town. Junker Two. Junk. Some type of Junk Town. Huh. It's a. Uh, is it a real city? A lot of their maps are real. Is it called Junkerton? I think it's... I really forgot the name of it. But <laughs> I'm pretty it sure it's Junkers. Junkers? Junkers. <laughs> Junkers, Junkers, Junkers look it up. Jersey. Junkers. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Uh, I have already stated a couple of The Witcher. Uh, I, would, I would pay fucking 150 bucks for Rainbow Six. Are you kidding me? I've got 300 and something hours out of it. What a, what other thing are you gonna get that much uh, enjoyment out of for that for sixty bucks? Like, that's that's crazy. So, yeah, those are definitely mine. Would you buy a Rainbow Six console? What do you mean? What's what's know. this console, console like? Console what are the specs? Has, it, it it could run Rainbow Six on the highest settings. It's just all <laughs> obsessed with sixes. It's all it runs all at sixty frames has, per second. The resolution is six hundred by 600. <laughs> six hundred. <laughs> really shitty resolution. Sixty six gigs of RAM. <laughs> Oh, it could have been 666, but six six gigabyte hard drive. <laughs> so much RAM, but such a little hard drive. <laughs> oh man, uh, <laughs> more RAM than hard drive. I space. would buy the shit out of that console in a heartbeat. It costs three hundred dollars though. <laughs> what? But you have to buy two. <laughs> six hundred. <laughs> uh, it costs six hundred dollars. There actually. you go. We figured it out. We do math. 